Everybody, happy Friday. Hope you are all doing really well. I'm just checking the chat here to see everyone. Thanks for joining us. I see Delia and Patricia and Terry and Star. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. I hope y'all are all having a good Friday because it is definitely Friday here and I, I needed this a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking forward to this all, all day. So um, hi, if you're new here, my name is Carly Bell and I like to do machine embroidery tutorials um, here on my Facebook page and on my YouTube channel. And we get together every other Friday night for a live tutorial from start to finish and we call it Sip and Stitch. So grab the beverage of your choice sit back and watch and then you can always watch the replay later when you are ready to complete a project or if you have all your supplies ready you can work along with me no matter what you can ask questions along the way I'll be checking the the chat box um, throughout the evening and then sometimes I'll stop and say does anyone have any questions so if I missed your question earlier you can always repeat it whenever I stop and do that so thanks so much for joining me I'm so excited about tonight's project. We're going to do some really fun stuff. But um, before that, I want to tell y'all a couple things. So um, let's see. Hi. All right. Um, so if you don't know, I have a membership group. And it's um, through the company that I love, Creative Fabrica. I go to them for a lot of um, online designs, graphics, embroidery designs, fonts. Um, I get a lot of my stuff from them. And over at Creative Fabrica, I have something called the CF Fans Membership Group. And that's a monthly membership group that I have. And the perks of being a member is that you get a private sip and stitch with me every month. So we do it through Zoom. So it's a lot more interactive, um, able to ask questions. And, and it's, it's really nice to get to talk to people and see their faces um, on the Zoom chat. And uh, we do a project every month. And then I also give a free embroidery design every month. So I wanted to show you all that because we just did it this past Monday. So this was a design I think I put up at the end of February. But it is a shamrock four leaf clover. And then if you could see at the bottom there, it says lucky. And I don't know if you can tell by the light, but there's mylar underneath this sketch stitch of the shamrock. So we made this shirt on Monday and then I have another free, I have another design for them for, it's actually for March, that is an Easter design. So I just wanted to show y'all that. We, if so, if you are in the CF Fans membership group and you missed the class on Monday, you can go to the homepage and click the link to watch the replay. And then we're gonna have another class Monday the 28th. We're having a bonus class this month and that's going to be on Stitch Artist and how to digitize um, designs and going over the features of Stitch Artist Level 2. So that's for all my CF fans members. Um, and if you're interested in joining, I have a link down below that brings you to the page and, and shows you everything. So I wanted to show that. And then let's see what else I had to show you. Oh, I think I left it downstairs. Abigail started playing she made a project from start to finish by herself. Now, she hasn't totally finished yet, though, but she made it in the hoop, bunny, stuffy, and she did it all on my baby lock Altair. I let her thread it. She hooped the stabilizer. She picked the fabric. She put it. I was so, I had a really big, proud mama moment. I'm like, yay, but I left it downstairs, so I can't show you. The next time, I will show you. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to tonight's project. Um, if you've been following along for a little while now, you'll know that I discovered, a comp it's, the company's been around forever, but I finally discovered 
them uh, last fall, and the company's name is Kimberbell. And they are an embroidery design company, and it's it's different than the things that I'm usually doing and drawn to. So usually I'm making things for my kids and for all my friends having babies. I do all the, the bibs and the burp cloths and the onesies, and I make my kids shirts for every special day at school that there is. <laughs> and I throw monograms on things, but that's my usual go-to things is the kids and the babies. Um, last year or year before last, I started really getting into in the hoop projects, but still all those in the hoop projects were more geared for the kids. And what I love about Kimberbell is that it brought me to, to step away from looking at all the kids stuff and look at stuff that I would like in my house. And those are pillows and quilts. And I've never quilted anything before. I've, I just started playing around with it in the past few months. But um, they have quilts that are all the blocks for the quilt are made in the embroidery machine. And then you put it all together. So that's a big goal of mine this year is to make a quilt. But in the meantime, I'm like, let's start with pillows. So the project we are doing tonight is to make a pillow. So some of the series that they have, excuse me, they have big bench pillows. And I, I don't know how wide they are, but they are big. And they have them for like all of the holidays. And um, I haven't made one of those yet. But what I did get, they have something, a smaller version, and they call it their bench buddies. And they have three different sets. And then if you get all the sets, you'll have cute little pillows for each month of the year. Goes with the season or the holidays for that particular month. So I think in December, I purchased, or January, I purchased the Bench Buddies for January, February, March, and April. And now I'm finally, I haven't made any of these. And then I'm like, okay, I need to make them before, <laughs> before all these months are over. So I made the two April pillows. So let me show you this. So this is the bunny and this is eight by eight inches. So it's, it's on the small side, um, but it's super cute. This is what we're going to be making tonight. And then this is the other pillow in that series. And this is, so each month has a square pillow and a rectangle pillow. So this one is the one we're making tonight. So let me check the chat real quick. Let's see. Carol says she can't do Kimberbell until I use up my stockpile. I need to get cracking. I have the same problem. I actually made myself a project list. Every time I buy a design, I'm like, oh, I want to make this, this, this. I made like just a, a Google, Google Doc on my computer. So when I buy the design, I add it to my list, what the design was, and if there's something in particular I want to use it for, make it for. I have the list and now I've got the Kimberbell to go with it. So I still, I still have a lot of projects to make. <laughs> so yay, Cindy said she did the rectangle one the other day. The rectangle one was fun because that had more sewing involved in it. And I'm, I'm not definitely not an expert at sewing. I'm, I'm, I'm getting the straight line down though. It's, it's, it's coming. So, all right, let me put, let's see, I had something. There we go. Um, okay. So Delia has a good question. Where do you buy the Kimberbell designs? Because I don't think they're everywhere. So in the, the time that I've learned about Kimberbell, I kind of learned how they work. So the company is awesome, beautiful stuff. But you go to their website and all the cute things you see, they're not available. Not all of them are available, available to buy on their website. And that is because they really promote the us, the crafters, to go to their local quilt shop and purchase their products. So the um the quilt setups if you want to buy the fabric kit for their quilt designs um if you want to buy the the bench buddies and the um some quilt shops will put together fabric kits so that you can buy the design and get all the little cute pieces of fabric and embellishments to make it just how the picture looks if you want 
to not if you don't have much of a stash and you want to start getting things together. So a lot of their stuff, they want you to go to your local quilt shop. Um, I unfortunately don't have a local quilt shop that is open that has their um, merchandise. I, I called a few and they said they don't have much, but they can order it if I needed to. So if I plan ahead better, I'm going to do that. But in the meantime, my go-to place is Sewing Machines Plus. And um, I bought a few things from them, but they don't have everything. So then I went on Etsy and I found quilt shops that have an Etsy page. And I found one in particular, I think it was called Thimble Dots. And I bought a few things from them now. Hold on one second. Elise is here. What's up? Mommy, yeah. I'm going to miss out on game nine. Oh, what are we playing? Candyland. Candyland? Okay, well, can I play with you when I'm done with my video? Will you promise to save me um, a spot? Please. I have you one. Okay. Green. I'm, I love green. Good. Okay. Hey, I promise. I'm making your bunny pillow. I'm making your bunny pillow. Wait, you're making it? Yeah. That's what I'm making tonight. So let me make you pillow. I want to be in the video. Not right now. No. Because it's mine. I know, but you still got this on. You can't wear that. Okay, go. Bye. Watch the cords. Watch the cords. Okay. Close the door. Thank you. <laughs> huh? I'm sorry. I'm going to come play when I'm done. Go beat daddy a bunch. Go beat him a bunch. Okay, we'll do it this time and... Okay. Thank you. And whoever wins gets to pick the next one. Okay. And I'm going to win all the games. Okay, bye. <laughs> that's Elise. Um, that's my youngest daughter. Oh, your finger's okay? I'm sorry. Go show daddy. All right. <laughs> That's Elisa. That's my youngest daughter. Um, if you've been watching for a while, um, before I have the setup I have now, I did everything on my phone and she would always be in the room with me. And she, she is a mess and she's, she's a camera hog and all the things. But since I have this new setup, I have cords and wires and stuff going everywhere. So she's been staying out of the room since then, but sometimes she just can't help herself. She wants to be in the video. <laughs> Thank y'all. Okay. So what we were saying, so local quilt shops, if you have a quilt shop and um, you frequent them or call them and say, Hey, do y'all have Kimberbell stuff? And like I said, maybe they'll do like some of mine here and they'll order it for you. If there's something in particular that you want. Now, other things on the Kimberbell website, you can buy directly from the website. And one of them is I bought last year. Ugh. And that is the Bella box. So I bought the Bella box that I guess is actually from last spring or last summer. It's called the Live Creatively one. And if you saw the picture I posted earlier this week, they had that cute um, create banner above one of my embroidery machines. That's from that box. And then this is the thing I've been working on lately. This is called a folio. It like it holds a, a notebook, but um, I still I'm not done yet. So this is a design. I have to stitch something here and then it opens up more. And what happens here? This stays folded over and a notebook slides in here. The dry erase board gets put here and then this gets turned into a, um, a zippered pocket pocket. So I still have a lot of steps left to finish this one, but that's the kind of stuff that comes in their Bella box. So I'm looking forward to see what they come up with for this year's spring slash summer box. Um, other things they have on their website you could buy is um, quilting designs, like background quilting. And that's something I'm going to get to do the quilt that I purchased um, that I hopefully will finish this year so that I can hang it up and display it for next year. <laughs> Um, but we can go over that kind of stuff maybe in another video because it's something I'm really getting into and enjoying and liking and I want to share it with y'all. But let's get back to tonight's project. Ooh, Cindy says they also have a few free projects on their website. I need to go find those. All right. Free is always good. Yes. So Jenny, I love the folio too. The folio, like when I, when they advertised the Bella box and showed the folio, that is why I bought 
that box. And then the, the new thing now is the spring showers quilt. And when we're done with the pillow, I'm going to show you something I kind of took from there that we might use on our pillow tonight. And that is the whole reason why I bought that, <laughs> that quilt. There's always something that like really catches your eye. Like I have to have that. Like it comes with all this other stuff, but that is the thing that I need. So let's get started with tonight's pillow. Let's go over the supply list. So here's one of the pillows that I made and we're gonna make another one just like it tonight, but I'm using a different, I got some different fabrics we're playing with. So Elise decided, I told Elise she, when she saw this, she's like, mom, I want it. I'm like, I'll make you one. So, um, cause I had these by my front door on my, my little bench I have by my front door. Um, and I asked her to pick out fabrics and she wants this one. So this is gonna be Elise's and we're gonna make a new one. And I'm going to switch you over to my craft table camera so y'all can see what's going on here. All right. So this is the pillow. And we're going to change it up. And then this is the, the other pillow so you can see it closer. But this one had more sewing because I had to make these little triangles and sew them. And then it has this border. And then the back is a um, envelope closure and actually the back is put on on your sewing machine it's not done in the hoop but I don't see why it couldn't be done in the hoop um, if you can um, add just a border but for now we're just we're doing it on the sewing machines because that's how that's how they have it done all right so for tonight we are this pillow is eight by eight however um and if you have a machine with an eight by eight hoop, like tonight, I'm going to be doing it on my Recoma EM1010. Um, if you have a Persona or Alliance, there's a nice eight by eight hoop you can do this on. Um, however, if you have a machine that only has a five by seven hoop, you can still make this pillow. And I'm going to show you when we're done um, the instructions that came with the design. It comes with a beautiful PDF with step by step instructions. I'm going to show you how they do this same pillow on a five by seven hoop instead you have to separate it into two hoopings but it, it looks super easy they make it easy for you but the um the first thing you're going to need is your hoop and some cutaway stabilizer so this is a, a sheet of that pre-cut stabilizer i get from um, sewing machines plus super convenient then you need a piece of fabric and that is your background fabric and this is cut to be 10 and a half inches by 10 and a half inches now something else i've learned from kimber bell is that especially like for quilt blocks and then even for their pillows um if you are worried about puckering if you have issues with puckering you know stabilizer usually really helps with puckering um and what they actually recommend is to iron on some interfacing like regular SF 101, and I think Kimberbell makes their own version of interfacing, um, and iron that on the back of your project. I don't see why not um, some fusible poly mesh would work. I think the whole point is the ironing. Ironing always really helps with fabric from shifting and puckering. So, yay, Star said, um, Sew Machines Plus. Uh, promoted the free motion quilting kit on the persona um, this week for quilt fest. Yes, it's very intriguing to me too, and I need it. <laughs> um, we're gonna talk about, so we're gonna talk about quilt fest when some, something's stitching and we got some time. Um, so this is my piece, background piece of fabric for the, um, the pillow. I already have interfacing ironed on there. All right, then some pieces you need for the bunny. You need the face. So on this pillow, I used my regular white fabric and I actually did two layers of it, but you could still kind of see the, the fabric behind it through it a little bit. And I put heat and bond and everything, but I, at the fabric I'm using is really thin. So for tonight, I wanna try something different and I have a piece of white fleece. So then the bunny's face is gonna be soft and fluffy. Um, because I'm using that, I got a piece of water soluble topper. So when we stitch the eyes and the nose and everything, it doesn't sink into the fleece 
too much and we can um and we can see it better so that's the face and then the ears this is the fun part and this is the part that was new to me when i make it to make these fuzzy ears and i still didn't do that great of a job of you want it to fray and look like chenille um so i'm gonna show you how they do that tonight but you need essentially four pieces of your white fabric for the ears all cut to be the same size so you need four pieces of white for the ears and then that's all we're going to do um oh no then the um under the ears you can use a pink fabric if you want but to make it a little fun i'm going to use a piece of heat transfer vinyl so this is um glitter heat transfer vinyl so that's going to go on the um, inside of the ears. This is all what's done on the embroidery machine. Then when it's done and we pull it out and we cut it to size, you need the back of the pillow. So I have two pieces of fabric that are going to make the back of the pillow and that's going to get sewn on the embroidery on the sewing machine. And I think these are eight and a half inches by six and a half inches. And I went ahead and folded and ironed a, um, I guess probably more than a quarter inch um, seam allowance to so that there's no rough edge, raw edge on the the inside of the pillow like this. And we're actually gonna, if you see this one, we're gonna top stitch that um, closed when we go to the sewing machine. I think that is all of the main supplies you need for tonight. I'm also gonna use some spray adhesive um, to get this fabric on the stabilizer good because the fabric's actually slightly smaller than my hoop so it doesn't get hooped as tight as I want it to but um, now depending on which machine you're using is going to tell you which hoop um, and your setup now I'm using my Ricoma EM 1010 and the easiest thing for me to do on that machine is to use my mighty hoop because I have a eight by nine mighty hoop here um so even though it's eight by nine the embroidery field is eight by eight so this is perfect for this project so let's go ahead and i'm gonna spray uh, my stabilizer and i'm just going to Put my fabric on there good and i even i had one of those rolly things here we go i got this for my silo my cutting machine to make sure the the fabric goes nice and smooth when i put it on the cutting mat all right so that's it now last night when i was playing around with this and getting ready i did mark the center of this just to give me so, you know, a good eyeball of um, making sure I hoop it um, centered. So you can do that as well. But usually this, this should be pretty easy to eyeball and put right in the hoop. Okay, so now we're just going to hoop the stabilizer and the fabric. So I'm going to lay down the bottom let me make sure i got room here okay this is the bottom of my mighty hoop i'm gonna lay the stabilizer and fabric on top and i'm just looking and making sure i have it the fabric you know somewhat centered doesn't have to be perfect but close enough is good so that is there and then all I do is move my drink out the way <laughs> and go boom and that's it and now my fabric and stabilizer is hooped and taut and ready to go on the machine all right now any questions so far I know we haven't covered too much but we've been talking a lot any questions so far? Uh, 
All right. I'm just checking the chat. No questions. All right. So here's my, my baby. This is Roxy. Um, this is a 10 needle machine and she's amazing. Um, and so I have my hoop slid right on and I have my threads um, in the back already picked. I have the design loaded on the machine. And what else? I chose, I chose my hoop. Now I get this question sometimes when you're working with a mighty hoop or like a fast frame, the Racoma calls it the um, eight in one device. It's just very, very similar to a fast frame. What hoop do you pick on the machine? I usually pick a hoop that is either slightly bigger than what I'm working with, if there's an option, or I pick other so that there is no hoop and you can move the um, hoop around to get it centered where you want it by just moving the arrows around. So this is essentially an eight by eight hoop. And in the, um, on the screen of the machine, you can choose the eight by 12 hoop. So that's what I chose. So I still, um, the machine still knows that um, it's only eight inches tall, but it thinks it's 12 inches wide, but that's fine because I'm going to center it and make sure it stitches out right where I want it to. So I have the design loaded. I have the eight by 12 hoop picked on the machine. Then other things that's different from a multi-needle compared to a flatbed machine is usually on a flatbed machine, I'm just going with the flow. And when I need to change a thread, then I pick the color. Sometimes I, I don't have everything picked out ahead of time. I'm just like, oh, what should I do for this step? Uh, I'm going to do pink and I go and pick a pink color. Um, when you're working with a multi-needle machine, you have to kind of plan ahead a little bit more because the machine is switching the needles and the thread for you automatically. So I know that I want the majority of the bunny is white and there's some pink sections and there's um, the black of the eyes and the whiskers. So I usually open the design in my embroidery software and I go and look at what each step is and you can even print out what each step is and then I go to the machine and I'm like okay the first step is placement stitch doesn't matter what color I pick second step is this I know I want that to be white and so on the machine I go and I for each step I have to pick a needle and each needle is associated with a color so then I tell the machine for step one is needle three step two is also needle three and five and so on until I get through all the steps of the design. Now, because we're doing applique, I um, there's two options. You can either tell the machine you want the frame to come out after certain steps, or if in this case, the majority of the steps you need to stop and, and trim things, I put the machine on what's called automatic manual to where it will stop after every step um, automatically. Um, and then I have to press go when I'm ready to go to the next step. So that's how I have my machine set up tonight. So I'm hit OK. Then what's left? Then once you have your frame chosen, your design loaded, and your colors picked out, next is tracing the design and making sure that it's going to stitch right in the area you want it to and your needle's not going to hit this um, magnetic giant hoop <laughs> on accident because it's not a good thing. You don't want that to happen. Um, so I'm in order to trace, you have to essentially lock the machine. So on, on, I know like on my other machine, there's a lock button. This one is embroidery status it's called, but it has a little padlock on it. So it's locked. So now I can do the trace feature and the trace feature is always done on needle number one. So right now needle number five is picked. Um, and I could see it here and I see my marking is way over here, but let me see. I think I fixed it last night how I want it. So I'm going to leave it there. And then now I'm going to hit trace. It's going to move over to needle one and now I can hold it down and make sure it traces right where I want it to. And it's not hitting any of the corners of my, um, magnetic hoop and I can move it around and adjust it um, as needed 
um, in case, you know, something doesn't look right or it's not stitching right where you want it. All right, so that's it. Once you have all of that loaded and you traced it and make sure nothing's gonna go not where you want it, then we can start stitching. So the first step is the placement for the face. So I'm gonna hit start. No, actually the first step is placement for the pink part of the ears. So it's gonna show me where to put the heat transfer vinyl. All right, so I'm going to grab my heat transfer vinyl. So now all I did was stitch the outline of the pink where we want the glitter vinyl. So when you get heat transfer vinyl, it usually comes with this clear, um, call, it's called a carrier sheet. You wanna peel that off. So this we don't need, we could toss that. And here we have the glitter vinyl. I'll throw this away and you're just going to lay this over and make sure it covers your placement ship stitch completely. And then if you want, where's my pencil? I'm going to, um, you can tape this down with some paper tape or masking tape, or you can use chopstick or um, a pencil just to make sure it doesn't move when it starts stitching. So I'm going to hit start. But don't put your fingers in there. But once it starts stitching, it tacks it in place to where it shouldn't be a problem. All right, and so we're done with that. And now we have to trim it. So I'm gonna take you back over to the craft table. All right, so here it is. I did the stitching in pink, so I'm sorry it's hard to see. Um, and where's my other scissors? I don't see them. Now, sometimes when I've played with heat transfer vinyl, it is, you can tear it. But sometimes I get nervous tearing it. So I just trim it, <laughs> but I, I have been able to just watch. I'm bad. Sometimes I cut the stitches that was holding it, but there's going to be another stitch that's going to go over it to really hold it in place. Okay, so you're just gonna take that. You see where I pulled it? It pulled the stitches up. So it's probably best not to pull it, just trim it. And if you're ever wondering what, like you want the, the supplies that I'm using, wanna know where I got them from, um, you can always go to the, let's see if I have it here, the Sip and Stitch homepage, which um, is on my website, carlybell.com. At the top menu, you'll see a Sip and Stitch option, or you can go to carlybell.com slash Sip and Stitch. Um, and that's going to have links to all of the supplies I'm using, including the scissors, the hoop, the stabilizer, all that good stuff. All right, so that is it. So now we're gonna put it back on the machine and then now I think it stitches the placement for the face. All right, so now I'm gonna hit start. My other threads keep getting in, in my way. There we go. 
So now it's stitching the white of the um, the face. And I gotta fix this because it's gonna drive me crazy. So there's this bar back here that's supposed to hold all of the threads you're not using out of the way, but mine always sneak out of there and get in my way. Okay, now they're out of the way. All right, so there's the white placement stitch showing you where to put the face. So this is my fleece. Um, I'm not putting anything on the back of it. Um, no heat and bond or anything like that. I'm just putting it on there. And now that's going to tack down. Okay, I see y'all are talking about Quilt Fest. Um, so Karen watched Quilt Fest. Oh, let's see, right here. Karen watched Quilt Fest from beginning to end. Um, Hoop Fest is in June. Yes, Hoop Fest is, I'm going to look forward to that. Hopefully, um, I taught at Hoop Fest last year, and hopefully I can do it again this year. But actually, now I'm looking at the date. I'm supposed to be out of town for some of those days for my, my aunt. Um is doing her wedding vow, uh, vow renewal. And um, she invited us all to go to it because um, she wants, it's like their 35th or something anniversary. And um, she rented this big cabin in Gatlinburg and invited all the people who stood in her wedding. And I was a flower girl. <laughs> so, um, so I'm supposed to be doing that. I think it's the week of Hoop Fest, but uh, the beginning of Hoop Fest at least. All right, so that's that the fleece for the face, and I'm just trimming it away. So unfortunately, I did not have any time to watch Quilt Fest this week. I'm going to have to watch some of the replays this weekend. Um, but I'm looking, I have like certain segments like I really wanted to watch. I wanted to watch the Persona Free Motion Quilting. I wanted to watch, um, I think they did some demonstrations with a Juki sewing machine, like a straight stitch sewing machine that I really want to get, <laughs> that I have no place in my craft room to even put, but I still want it. Um, and there's some other, and I just wanted to look for like tips and stuff, especially for me being new and have no idea really what I'm doing. Okay, so the flannel, the not, what is this, fleece is fuzzy. So I'm just getting this cleaned up a little bit better. It's not a satin stitch that goes around it, but it's a cute kind of motif. And I don't want stuff sticking out of it on the sides. Okay, let's see, what's next? I think next is the outline for the ears. I'm gonna put it back on. All right. Okay, so I'm putting it back on. Let's see, yeah. Next is the outline for the ears. And I'm gonna show you how this is gonna go. Ooh, Krista has a Juki still in the box along with the Grace Cutie frame. I'm coming to your house, Krista. I wanna play with that. <laughs> yes, Carol said, get that Juki out the box. All right, Linda, hopefully that'll be a future project for us to do here on Sip and Stitch to demonstrate the free motion quilting on the persona. That'll be fun. So, okay, for I see some people asking. So for anyone unfamiliar, so Sewing Machines Plus is a company that I, I partner with and um, they have 
Blaine, the, the CEO of the company, he has a um, live Facebook show every week on Thursdays where he um, is either talking about stuff going on or demonstrating a particular project, uh, a particular machine, a product. And um, it's, it, he gets really excited when like new machines come out, you know, he wants to, to reveal them and all that stuff. So um, quickly, so it stitched the placement stitch of the ears. Now we have four pieces cut out. We're just going to do one right now. So just the one. Okay. And we're going to put that down there and then it's going to restitch the, the, the tack down and we're going to trim it. Okay. So yeah, so Blaine does a show every Thursday, but then three times a year, he does a week long virtual event. And in March is Quilt Fest, which is just finished up. And all of the, the stuff is on their uh, YouTube channel to watch. It's, it's easier to watch on YouTube because then you could just watch the replay and fast forward to like the segments that you want to watch. Um, so March is Quilt Fest. In June is Hoop Fest and that's all about embroidery. And I got to participate in that last year and it was a lot of fun. Um, and then September, I think it's September, he does Sew Fest and that's just sewing in general and, and, and a lot of fun stuff there. He usually has lots of brother ambassadors like um, Angela Wolf um, participate and they have really great educational segments with classes and then segments showing you all the different kinds of machines and um, how they're used and demonstrates them and everything and it's really fun. All right, so now the ear, ears are done, the first, first part of the ear. So now let's trim those. All right. And I'm using my scissors. And so you're just cutting this as close as you can to the stitch line without snipping the stitches. And the more you do this, the better you get at it. Also, whenever you get Kimberbell stuff, they, you get, usually all their stuff is like, I get it in the mail, right? Cause I ordered it from a, a quilt shop. Um, it comes with either a CD, where's my little thing here. It comes with a CD like this or um, another one I bought came with like a USB flash drive and all the designs are on it, um, which is nice because how many of us have had our computer hard drive fail and um, all your embroidered designs was on your computer. <laughs> so it's a nice backup, um, at least for their designs. But um, when you get the disc and you, you put it on your computer, um, it comes with PDF instructions for every design, the embroidery files in every format for every design, and it comes with SVG cutting files for every design that has any sort of applique. So they will give you the SVG files for these ears and this part of the ear and the face. So if you have a scan and cut, or a cricket or a silhouette, you can just load those designs on there with your fabric and have all of this pre-cut. If you hate trimming, that is an option for you. It's funny with the magnetic hoop, my, um, my scissors keep getting stuck <laughs> to it. <laughs> so you do have to be careful with these hoops because the magnet is super strong. Don't put your phone or your computer by it and don't get one if you have a pacemaker. So I'm always paranoid. I'm like, I've been, y'all have heard some of y'all have heard my computer troubles. 
in just like the past two months. Uh, no, actually six months. I've had horrible computer luck. So if I, I just got a brand new computer, if I kill it with this magnet, that's it. I give up. I'm not doing computers anymore. <laughs> Y'all won't see me anymore. <laughs> All right. Trimmed the ears. So I'm going to put it back on the machine. I think the next step is the eyes and the nose, or it might be the outline. I can't remember. We'll see what it does. But what I like about having it on the automatic manual where it stops for each step is I don't have to keep going back to my software and looking to see what the next step is because I know it's going to stop for me. All right, what's next? Now it's doing the outline, the pink outline around the pink section of the ear. Oh, Carol, I haven't read all the messages yet, but yeah, I, 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 I saw some of it. So Par Carol's laptop got lost in shipping. Um, but thank God you got it back. It just took a while, huh? It went like, uh, what, what did we call the brim board that got lost? McFly. <laughs> Oh, yes. Karen makes a good point. I love Becky from Power, Tool, Power Tools with Red. She shows you how to use the scan and cut for cutting out applique and using simply applique software to embroider on your project. Yes, yeah, she is awesome. She is um, she does uh, she does Kimber Bell stuff and a lot of quilting. I've been watching her. She's awesome. OK, so the pink is done now. Let's see. Now I think it might do the white outline for the whole bunny, the ears and the face. Okay, so that's going to take a second. <laughs> Amber, I hate computers. <laughs> I love, I, we have a love-hate relationship. We have a love-hate relationship. All right. So let's see, while that is stitching, that might take a minute. This design stitches out pretty quickly, but that's, I think, the longest part. I am going to show you, okay, so we talked about, I have an 8x8 eight eight hoop. Now, if you don't have an 8x8 eight eight hoop and you're working with a machine that only has a 5x10 or a 5x7 or a 6x10, you can still do this project. And I'm going to show you how nice Kimberbell instructions are. So watch this. This is the PDF that comes with the design. Um, they have two sets. They have one set of instructions that shows you how to make it on the 8x8 hoop like I'm doing tonight. But this instruction shows you how to do it on the 5x7 hoop. So it goes over the fabric you need for each um, piece. And it talks about you peel the, the clear carrier off the... Um, HTV glitter, you iron interfacing on the back. So you're still starting with the same size fabric we're starting with tonight, except you're gonna mark it um, and make a big crosshair on it. And then what does it says? Measure a quarter of an inch down and make another crosshair. You're gonna have a big piece of stabilizer like I started with tonight, but you're only gonna hoop one side of it. Then on the design that goes with this uh, five by seven pillow project, it's gonna stitch out some placement lines and it's gonna show you right where to put your fabric. And then it's going to do a basting stitch and you see it goes through everything and it's just gonna do the face, right? Then when it's done with the face, you're gonna take it out the hoop and then you're gonna use your, your other mark that you made to hoop the second part. And it should, it's kind of like a repositionable hoop, except you are the repositioning. <laughs> the hoop is not repositioning for you. Um, and it should line up perfectly where the ears will go right on top of the face that you already stitched. So all of that is in the instructions so that you get the same final product that we're doing tonight. Um, it's just a little bit more work because you have two hoopings, but um, 
it, it, it can be done. And that's, it's like that on all of their, um, on all of their uh, designs. They all uh, show, if you don't, you don't have to necessarily have to have a giant hoop. Um, a lot of their stuff can be done on five by seven or six by 10. Um, all right, let's see. I'm checking the chat. Okay, this is this is a big problem for a lot of people, Krista. She said she spent part of her day at the library getting help from the young. I like how you say from the young <laughs> to organize her design. She spends more time trying to find what she wants to embroider than actually stitching. I know how you feel, Krista. We all go through this when we get started because we buy the embroidery machine and then we just go, some of us, like myself, go gung-ho and like, oh, look at this cute font. Oh, look at this cute design. And you just buying stuff. And when I started, I just had one folder with all the designs. I think the only thing I separated was fonts. I, um, so let's see, the white is done stitching. So that's the white outline, right? So next is, I better check. I got my instructions right here. Um, Okay, when it's done stitching the white outline, now is when you want to add your extra three pieces of white fabric. So I just stacked all three pieces right on top of each other. See, this one has a little bit of a stain. I'm gonna put that one on the bottom. Um, so all three pieces stacked right on top of each other, okay? And that we're gonna put right on top of the ears. Actually, I'm looking at the wrong instructions. I bet you it's different because I'm looking at the five by seven instructions. I think the face gets stitched next. Let me pull it up real quick. Yeah, the face gets stitched next. Let me hold the, hold off on this. All right, let me hit start. All right, so yeah, so next, oh wait, stop, stop, cut. Before I stitch the face, remember this is fuzzy fabric. Now I'm gonna put the water soluble topper so that that stitches a little better. So I only did a couple stitches, so I'm gonna go ahead and start. But I, if I messed up something, I could back up and go back to the beginning of this step. All right, now that will stitch a little better with the water soluble topper. All right, it's gonna stitch the eyes and whiskers, then the nose, then we're gonna put our three layers of fabric. I'll make sure I'm doing this right. Okay. Um. Okay, we were, we were talking about um, the designs. So when I first started, I had one folder with all the designs and one folder with all the fonts. That gets out of hand fairly quickly. And I've been embroidering for, let's see, nine years now, um, almost nine years. Uh, so you can imagine I have quite a collection of designs and fonts now. And um, let me zoom in on here so you can see this a little better, how cute it is. There you go. Um, so now what I've done, and actually Carol, our lovely moderator on YouTube tonight, um, if you're a member of our Facebook group, we have a guide section. And in there I have extra tutorials and uh, posts on all kinds of stuff. Um, and one of them is a video Carol made showing how she organizes her embroidery designs. And it, it's up to you. There's, there's several ways you can do it. Um, what I've done is I have an embroidery folder. And in that folder, I have multiple folders 
and I have a Christmas folder, a birthday folder, an animals folder, a, um, you know, every other holiday, I have my BX fonts all in one folder because I use Embrilliance and the format for Embrilliance fonts are BX. If you have other fonts, you can make a font folder, you can make a monogram folder, you can make a frames, quilt designs, so on and so forth. So you can categorize it like that. Then if you want, you can also make a folder for each shop that you buy from. So I have a Kimberbell folder. Um, if you have tons of uh, uh, creative applique, Lenny Penny, itch to stitch, you can make a folder for each shop and, and you, can, you can have it separated like that. And I know people that have both. So those are lots of options that you can do to make your life a little bit easier when it comes to finding all the designs that you have. All right, that was the eyes and whiskers and now we're doing the nose. So yeah, that water soluble top, topper is really helping um, keep those stitches on top of that fluffy fleece. Krista. So I think I've seen this free thing somewhere too. I, I want to say Dawn at Creative Appliques has, uh, on her website, she has some sort of download that all it is is folders to kind of get you started. But you can just create your own folders. And then every time I buy a design, I down, it goes to my downloads folder. It's usually a zip file. I unzip it. And then I will, on my computer, I just drag and drop things. Um, or I can copy it and paste it into the category I want in my embroidery folder. Um, and then I'll go and delete it out my downloads folder. Another step you can take is if you're worried that you have so much stuff and there's so many files and you don't need all those files. Um, for instance, if you are a person that has only brother and baby lock machines, or you're a person that only has a Recoma or an industrial machine, the format that you use. So most are either PES, my Recoma takes DST. I think all machines take DST actually. You can just save one or two formats and that's it. Delete all the other formats. And with any embroidery software program, I, I think you could do this with any of them. I know you can with Embrilliance. You open up your PES design if you get a new machine later on and it takes a different format, open up your PES design in Embrilliance and then go to save stitch file as and save it as a DST or um, the format, I think it's JEF for Janome or whatever it is. You can always, as long as you have one format, you can convert it into any format. Uh, when, if, when and if you get a new machine. So you don't have to keep all those formats if you're worried about it taking up too much uh, space on your computer. Okay, so the face is done. I'm going to go ahead and pull this water soluble topper off now. So it's not in my way. See, boom, ripped right off. Super easy. Okay, now the step of the ears. So we have these ears. What do we have here? I have a piece that needs to be trimmed. All right, we have these ears here, and now we have our three layers of white. And I'm just stacking those and putting them right on top and making sure they cover those ears that are underneath there. And this is gonna give us our faux chenille. Okay, 
So there we go. Got those three layers on. Now we're gonna hit start. And let's see if I remember what it does. I think it does. It does it all. It does the basting outline and it does the lines that make the chenille. So that's it. So that's gonna take a second. So while that is stitching, I wanted to show you um, the quilt that I bought. Let's go back to the craft table. Okay, this is our back, make sure. Okay, this is our back pieces. I save that, okay. This is the quilt. This is their new, what's called a feature quilt. So these are meant to come out for a final size of 40 inches by 40 inches. And most people hang them up on the wall. It's not, I don't think it's a quilt that you would put on your couch and cover yourself with while you're watching TV. Um, but you could if you want to. The thing that makes me think it's more of a... Um, uh, put on the wall, hang up, display kind of quilt is it has a lot of embellishments and I'm going to show you some of them because I, I did get the embellishment kit. So this is the beautiful quilt. See, it comes with the CD with all the designs. And so all of everything you get from Kimberbell comes with a beautiful PDF instructions, but with the quilt, they made, they put it all in a book for you. So it, it goes over all the, all the things, all the things. So when we talked about the Bella box, um, the thing that stood out for me for the Bella box was the folio. The thing that stood out for me for this quilt is right here, I'm pointing to it, these flowers. I could not get over these flowers. I absolutely loved them. And you can see them here. So look at that. I saw that, I'm like, how is that on the embroidery machine? How is, how is, that, how is that possible? And then when I saw Kim, the, the owner of Kimberbell, do a, a demonstration on Facebook. I was like, oh, that makes sense. But it's beautiful. And that's, that is the whole reason I was like, I need to have that. So I'm going to show you. I, I made one tonight before we started. So let's see. Let me show you a couple things. All right. So I made one. Look how cute it is. Isn't it adorable? Um, if you And if you notice on the bench buddies you see these little um they embellish their bunny pillow with these ribbon flowers i thought it would be adorable to put the felt flowers so i stitched out one now let me show you what it looks like on the machine so first it stitches a basting stitch to show you where to put the felt then i don't know if you can see the white line shows you where to cut it. So you actually cut along the white line. And then the orangey line is just some to give the flower some color once you roll it up. Like you see some of these, I don't know if you could see, like the blue flower right there has some pink stitching in it. Um, so it just gives it a little bit of color. When I did this one, I did white um white stitching so you see that white line there there was another line right next to it and that was the cut line and but all that thread gets removed when you cut it so all that's left is there so it's so stinking cute and that this this was what everything was cute but this was like okay that's it i need i need that so you stitch it on um water soluble stabilizer let's see i'm not focusing um you stitch it on water soluble stabilizer and when you're done, you cut it. Let's see, I did it with my big scissors earlier. Let's see if I can do it here. So they recommend, no, that ain't gonna work. No, this is not my good scissors. These are my good ones. These are my newest ones. Yeah, they always cut like butter. All right, so the white line is what I'm gonna cut around. So it's a little tedious. And I'm actually wondering if I can cut this on the, the scan and cut, but I, I don't know. I don't know if that's a possibility. I'll have to play around with that. 
But you see, when I cut it, the 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 thread that was the cut line it, it gets kind of frays away and goes so all that's left is that is that orange so it's going to take some time but basically you cut this and it ends up being a long piece it's kind of wavy and it has a um a round piece there. So you just kind of twist it, um, roll it all up. And you start from this end and roll it in. So then the last uh, part is this and then you just hot glue it and it holds it, it holds it all together. But I wanted to show you and then you also have to soak it in water to get the stabilizer off because you don't want to see the stabilizer on the back side of the flower because it's going to get all rolled up and you might you're going to see it this one's more tedious to cut out than the other one i did so i don't know how many of these i can make because i don't know how many of these i can stand to cut out but i love them so much i will <laughs> all right let's see all right it is done so this is something I'll just have to do later. Let's see. Those are not my new scissors. These are my new scissors. Okay. We are done. Let's see. I'm sorry. I'm just catch, catching up on the chat. Oh, Linda said she was hooked on the beehive and the little rain boots. Me too. I, I love all of it. I really love all of it, but I, I was most excited about making the flowers first. Um, okay, so Carol brings up a good point. Um, don't have a CD player. I have a, a MacBook, um, Apple MacBook, and a lot of the new even PCs don't have um, CD players. I bought this. I bought this like 10 years ago because I got a MacBook... That was my graduation present when I finished grad school. Um, my my uh, my mom and uh, my husband chipped in and bought me a nice MacBook, and it it was like the first MacBook that didn't have a CD drive. So I got this, and um, it's a a CD drive that's external, and it just plugs in the USB port. So I got that when I got my first MacBook because. It was freaking me out not to have a CD drive. Now it's like super common not to have one. But I've been having this little sucker for 10 years and it's uh, it's come in handy. So I think you could probably buy something like this. It doesn't ha maybe have to be an Apple one, but I'm sure they make some like this um, where you can get the files off the CD. Now, some of the things I bought from Kimber Bell have been on CD and some have been on flash drive. So I don't know what the norm is because this the quilt is a new product, like brand new, just came out. And it's on CD. So I don't think some things are USB, some things are not. All right. Um, yeah, so Stacy said external CD players are fairly cheap. Oh, Sandy said you can get one for 10 bucks. All right. Um, Cindy said, do you have the new rotary blade for the scan and cut? They show felt doesn't always cut very well. I don't know, Cindy. Um, I don't think I've tried to cut felt with my silhouette rotary blade either. I don't know. I have to look into it. Bon Bon X, did I say I ruined my computer with a magnet? No, I ruined my computer with water. <laughs> my water bottle busted in my work bag and my computer was sitting in it for several minutes um, and was it was not happy. Not happy. Okay. All right. Megan said most of Kimberbell does come on a CD. 
All right, Star's leaving. Good night, Star. All right, so we are done stitching. This is all that's everything on the embroidery machine. So, um, yeah, Carol said, too bad you can't put a wet PC in rice like a phone. <laughs> Big old bowl of rice. <laughs> No, no, that wasn't, it wasn't having it. It wasn't having it. Um, and that was my husband's computer because I was still using the computer I got in 2012 that I mentioned was my first MacBook. Um, that was my graduation present. Um, I was been using that until last year. So MacBooks are expensive, but they, to me, hold their value and they work. For a long time and that macbook is still downstairs abigail's using it it just can't handle the software that i'm running for all these cameras it, it wasn't handling that very well so my husband had a newer computer he had for school so i i inherited his and then i killed it so that was my fault <laughs> not the computers um all right so this is everything we're done on the embroidery machine you see those lines that's going to make our chenille now, do you see the line that's the outline of the ears? That we're going to take out. So that is actually a basting stitch. It's, it's much, um, the ones going across here are a bean stitch. It, it goes back and forth three times and the stitch length is shorter. Around here is a basting stitch. It only goes once and the, the stitch length is longer. So that should be easier to get out. So what you can do is take your scissors or your seam ripper and just pull that out. So that's your next step when it's done stitching, okay? That's gonna take a little while. my tin of trash. I might do better going on the back. It's a little harder to see. No, I can't tell which one is which because they got the other stitches. So I'm going to stay on the front here. You could just keep snit. I just cut a bunch and then pull them out with the tweezers. I'm just trimming every so often. All right, and then let's see how well I do this. Oh, that's the bobbin. And oh wait, I was supposed to trim this first because that's my outline. My look. Yeah, I need to trim it first. Then I take out the base and stitch. Oopsie daisy. I need that as a guide, right? Okay, trim. Okay, so I'm going through all three pieces of that um, fabric that I put on top, okay? All three pieces. And now it doesn't matter if you snip that basting stitch line because that's coming out anyway. I 
wonder how bad Elise is kicking Chris's butt at Candyland. That child is a master. She gets so lucky <laughs> every time we play. She's so good at Candyland. And she's so good at memory. She uh she beats Chris at that all the time too. Okay, so I kind of snipped this already, but I am I can see where my stitches were so that I could see where my outline is. Okay, now back to the tedious basting stitch pullout. <laughs> Okay, need some background music now, huh? I forgot about this part taking so long. All right, so I'm gonna just finish this one ear. And then I'm going to show you the next step and not take so much time to do the other one because I can do that one after. Because it's too quiet in here when I'm focusing on silly things like this. <laughs> okay, so we have the basting stitch pulled up. Now, the next step is... Okay. I'm gonna use my, my favorite scissors here. I've seen other things available specifically for um, this kind of project and they're called chenille cutters. And the ones I saw, I think was Olaf, A-O-L-A-F. And it looked like what I think of as a letter opener. And it had like a plastic piece that went underneath this and then it had a, a little blade right here. And so you could just run it underneath and boom, it would, it would cut it right out. Um, I don't know how many of these projects I'm going to do that I'm, I'm going to invest in a little tool like that. So for now, I'm just using my scissors and I'm eyeballing, cutting it in the middle. So you're cutting just the three pieces that you laid on top and, um, and you see that white piece that we started with, the bottom layer is still there, okay? So that's what we're doing. So it's, it's pretty easy to do with the, with the scissors. And I'm gonna show you the part that I kind of struggle with that I might need to buy a tool to make it better. And that's, that's the part of actually making it Fluffy. And you can take, I still have it in the hoop. You could take it out the hoop here, might make it easier. Okay, let me take it out the hoop. So that's where we, we begin to make the, the faux chenille is cutting in between those stitch lines. So, but in the meantime, I'm going to remove the hoop because we are done with hooping, I don't need that anymore. So now I can get in here better. Now, 
I guess that's just supposed to be. I don't think I'm going to do this one all the way through because this is not stitched. Let me see how it looks. Because I had trouble with this one too. Like I had this floppy piece right here that was hanging off and I ended up going with my sewing machine and stitching right here to keep it tacked down. Let me see what they suggest in the instructions for that part. Ah, yeah, they say stop cutting right here. So on that piece, stop cutting right here. So I cut a little bit, but I didn't cut all the way to the end. All right, I could see that on there. So on this side, I'm gonna stop cutting right here. Aha, I knew they had to be something I was missing. Okay. Okay, so you cut all of your pieces and that one stats. Okay, so you see it's still real flat kind of looking. So what they recommend is get an emery board. And let me show you, I'm a house of girls. I have a Jojo unicorn emery board here with the rough sandpaper like back but what's good with this one is it has the point of the unicorn and that really helps me get, get in, in the areas I want <laughs> but basically you are fraying the and it's going to make a little bit of a mess um, you're fraying the edges the raw edges <coughs> excuse me <coughs> You're fraying the raw edges of the three layers of fabric that you put on top of the ears. So you can sit and play with this and get it how you want. Now, I see someone someone um, mentioned, and, th and this is what I was thinking of too, Megan. Um, my girlfriend's quilt shop, <clears throat> which is an adorable quilt shop, and they are based in Utah. And actually, the owner of this quilt shop is Kim from Kimberbell's sister. And not only is her sister, it's her twin sister. So it really confused me when I was like learning about Kimberbell. I'm like, well, what? And then I was like, Chris, I thought her name was Kim. <laughs> I was watching videos and then I realized, oh, that's her sister. That's her twin sister. But my girlfriend's quilt shop, they have a website. They sell tons of Kimberbell stuff. You can go on their website and get stuff if you don't have a place local to you. Um, they have a chenille brush. And it's like almost like a wire brush, I think. And I, I watched them use it on their Facebook page once. And it looked like it really did a good job. So I was thinking about maybe getting one of those. I don't think I need the cutter. I think that's easy enough to do with my little scissors. Because um, I have little scissors. If you only have big scissors, then yeah. Um, but that chenille brush looks like that would be worth it. But it's... You can do this for a while and really get in there and make it how you want. But y'all get the idea here, right? We're just roughing the edge. We're fraying it. We're um, making it all fluffy so that your end product looks something like this. But I really still, I could do this a lot more. It still could be fluffier. You still see the lines a little too much. I want it to be super fluffy. Because like in the picture, <clears throat> in the picture, you see how fluffy it is? It's like super fluffy. So yes, yeah, st a stiff, okay, here we go. Um, Chris has said a stiff toothbrush. I was thinking uh, it might be too harsh, but there's a, um, you can get a wire brush that is like the size of a toothbrush. Um but it might be too harsh for this. But y'all get the gist, so I'm just gonna finish this last little section here, and then I'm gonna show y'all the next steps. So what time is it? Oh yeah, we're already on. 
an hour and a half. So let's wrap this up. Okay, because I can sit here and do this for another 30 minutes. <laughs> but you fluff up your ears, and then you got a lot of a lot of debris going on there. I need to get me a little vacuum like Amber. Uh, my friend Amber at Bingham Bliss. Um, she has a wonderful YouTube channel. She has this cute little vacuum cleaner. She keeps her craft table clean with. It's like a little um, battery operated handheld vacuum cleaner. I need one of those. Okay, I'm trying to keep this in focus. Got too much stuff on the table. All right, so do all that. Finish the basting stitch, cutting, um, fraying your faux chenille. Now we need to cut this. So right now this is 10 and a half by 10 and a half. We want it to be eight and a half by eight and a half. So another investment I think I'm ready to give Kimber Bell more of my money is uh, something called the Orange Pop Rulers. And they are square and rectangle rulers where you can put the, the, the square ruler right over this and use your rotary cutter and cut inside of the, of the square and you'll have your perfect square. But I don't have that, so I'm trying to do this and I'm trying to have it centered. So <laughs> I know the center of the ears is the center of the design and that needs to be four and a quarter. And I think that's straight. So I'm going to, where is my marker? Yeah, Barbara loves the um the pot the pop rulers. I need I think I'm I'm ready to invest in those because I've done this a couple times now and I don't like it. So I'm just making some marks on where I gotta cut. And now I don't know what the middle of this. So the bunny itself is seven. So three and a half. That's the middle. I'm gonna put four and a quarter there. So this is eight and a half. And that's the top. So I got a little bit of a line to go by, but you could see how easy it is that this would not be a perfect square by the way I'm doing it. I'm sure maybe I'll more experience quilters and cutters might have some better solutions to make sure that this is where I could measure more spots definitely. So actually this needs to just be a quarter of an inch because you want the bottom of the pillow to be this line here. So you actually only want to go a quarter of an inch. So I know I can do this line lined up here because you get the whole thing gives you a quarter of an inch seam allowance okay so now when I sew the bottom it's there and yeah that's eight and a half yeah I must have not measured that right so this is so the same on both sides that's my line for up here That's done. And then Topo measured things right. And now, if I did want to put some embellishments on the bunny now would be the time to do it i don't know so like i have these flowers um if these pillows are just going out for decoration i'm sure it'd be fine just to hot glue these on the on the bunny but if you wanted to take a needle and thread and really pin it through the material to the back of the stabilizer you know now would be a good time to do it um, I want to continue with showing y'all all the steps, so I'm going to keep moving on. 
Let me get this out of the way. And so you have your bunny right side up. Um, then I still need, I never, um, I need a top stitch this, but I would put, I got my two pieces for my, the back of the pillow. I would put right sides together like this. And you see there's some overlap there like this. And then I would stitch all of this around like so. So when you're done. Oh, and also I got the little pillow form from the quilt shop too. Kimberbell makes a pillow form that fits perfectly in these, um, in these little pillows. So you can get the pillow form that fits in it, or you can just stuff it yourself with um, some stuffing or even make your own little pillow form with stuffing. And, and, uh, this looks like interfacing. You probably could just make this, but anyway, little tiny pillow form. But when, when you're done, let me show you this one. It's going to look like this where you got just a, a quarter of an inch seam allowance where you stitched the front and back together. Like I said, I did um, top stitch these folded um, seams here. So that's all finished. And then you just turn it right side out. Um, so if y'all are okay, understanding and okay with that, I'm not gonna go over to the sewing machine um, instead. And, um, because I think y'all got, so what I would do here is I would go to the sewing machine, stitch straight down, stitch straight down, and then put this together. Um, I, I clipped it all going all the way around. And then I took it to the sewing machine and just stitched a square around it. So if, um, if, ev if no one has any questions on the actual straight line sewing, then I think we are done with this project. So I'm going to wait because I still want to um, finish the ears and I'm going to put the flowers, the flowers on them. I think the flowers are so cute. So let's see. Okay, Terry, creative grids. Tell me about that. Let's see, Deal, you said it too. Creative get grid rulers are great, especially for quilting and squaring up blocks. All right. Yay, thank you, Jenny. Okay, good. I'm gonna put that on my um, on my shopping list. Because <laughs> y'all know I have a shopping list. So let me write that down. Creative grid. I got a notebook over here. All right, so they are more squared, if you will. Okay, got it, Delia. Creative grid rulers. Yeah, because I bought, like, when I made this little quilting, like, placemat, I keep it on my, I keep it on my table, and um, I put my tools and stuff on top of it on the other side of my craft table i made this and this was all with um a charm pack and i did buy this little four and a half by four and a half inch ruler to square like i made the half triangle blocks and then i used this to square it perfectly and so that they had the quarter inch seam allowance all the way around so this is the only thing i have so i thought the orange pop rulers would be good so that i had multiple sizes and of squares and rectangles but i'm going to check out the ones y'all recommended to creative grid okay but uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking too, Cindy. She's saying I, I probably need to get the pop rulers if I keep doing Kimberbell though, because they have some odd 
shape. So like this is a perfect square, but this is a rectangle. I don't know. And they, they have an orange pop ruler that would cut out the, the white section to be this size rectangle. And some of their quilt blocks are, are rectangle sizes too. So I don't know if those rulers would work for that. Hi, Mary. Excited you're here too. We just finished. So we're making this pillow, but this is, we never finished it. Um, I'm going to finish putting it all together later, but I still have to finish the ears. But this is the one we made tonight. And this is the one I made earlier this week. And I need those flowers. I need tons of those flowers. They're going to take me forever to cut though. <laughs> all right, guys. Let's see. Krista said six by 24. Yeah, I think my mother-in-law told me to get that. She told me to get a six and a half by 24 and a 10 and a 12 square. Okay, thanks. All right, Norma, if you, you can um, send them my way if you haven't used them. <laughs> so, uh, all right, let's see. Okay, so yay. I hope y'all enjoyed tonight's project. Um, the, this is, this is so much fun for me and I love all the, the, um, the holiday stuff. I'm super excited to get started with the quilt. I think I'm going to do some, um, I, I might even maybe for our next sip and stitch, make a quilt block, especially. And if I get the rulers and all that, I could show you how the quilting goes because there's several steps. So like the way that. They do it, or one of the ways that you can do it is you actually make the, you do it with the batting and the background quilting all in the hoop. And then when you're done, you stitch all the blocks together. And when you make your, uh, then you only have to do the backing or you can add more batting if you want, like to make the traditional quilt sandwich. And then they do the stitch in the ditch method because you already have all the pretty background quilting on each of the blocks. So I can show you making a block and how it involves the batting and the background quilting. So that might be our next sip and stitch, maybe. So speaking of that, let me look at my calendar. Our, so I usually um, come every other Friday. So the next Friday is April Fool's Day. I have to play a trick on y'all. No, I'm not gonna, no, I wouldn't do that. Um, so, <laughs> The only thing I it's still up in the air. So um, I think most of y'all know my oldest daughter, Abigail, she has, been, she's in dancing and she's in competition dancing. And I've been going all over the place with this child every weekend, bringing her to dance competitions. And we have one that weekend, but it's in Baton Rouge, which is only like an hour and a half away from me. However, for the past two competitions we've done, they usually are a Friday, Saturday, Sunday event. She's had to dance on Friday evenings and afternoons. So I won't know until that week what the schedule is and when she'll actually dance. There is a chance that I'm going to be in Baton Rouge Friday night. If that happens, I'm thinking we can do sip and stitch on a Thursday night instead. Because I don't want to skip it because the next two week, April 15th, I think is good Friday. And I think I will skip that one. Um, is the Friday before Easter. So keep tuning in and uh, check the Facebook page, check the Facebook group. Um, if you're not already a member of that, come join us. Um, and my website, the Sip and Stitch homepage for info on when our next Sip and Stitch will be. It might be on a Thursday night instead of a Friday, depending on dancing. And it's this, we only got one more competition after that one, and then I'm done. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, okay, ooh. All right, Dee Lee said, miss the channels with water and then brush to fluff. Ooh, I will try that out. Thank you for that tip. All right. Okay, I'm just checking the chat and seeing if they have any other questions so um yeah so next sip and stitch still up in the air i think i'd like to do a quilt block unless i come across something else fun or if y'all have any suggestions feel free to post them in the facebook group or you can email me 
let me show you my email is hello at carlybell.com. So if you ever want to send me a message, you can send it on Facebook, or if you just want to email me, you can email me there. So I think that's it for tonight, guys. We had, this was a lot of fun. Um, I, I know Elise loves her little pillow. I really love this one too. It was a lot of fun. Now, whether or not I'm gonna make the January, February, March pillows so that I have them ready for next year or go ahead and buy the next <laughs> set of months so I can have more pillows. Now, I think my next, I need to focus on the quilt because that's going to take a long time, but I would like to make one of their big pillow, the bench pillow, the giant pillow that these kind of go with. Um, that's something I want to do. I, I think I have my mind on Halloween. The, the Halloween designs are super cute. So I might do the big bench pillow, do it in the summer so that it's ready for Halloween. I hear Elise. <laughs> so, all right, guys, I think that's it for tonight. If there are no other questions, um, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. And um, remember, if you... Uh, tuned in late or you didn't have time to watch, you can always watch the replay on both my um, Facebook page and my YouTube channel. All right. Yay. I hope y'all all have a great um, weekend too. All right. Norma said, uh, should I buy free motion, free motion kit, quilting kit or stitch artist three? Ooh, that's a hard choice. That's a hard choice. How far have you gotten with Stitch Artist, Norma? How much have you played and digitized with? The main things in Stitch Artist 3 is um, I really like the branching feature. And there's something called a break line. I don't know how to explain that, but they, they got some good features. They got some good features, but it depends on how how... Have you mastered Stitch Artist Level 2 yet? If you still are grasping it, move on to the free motion quilt and give yourself time to master Level 2. And then so you really appreciate the features that you get in Level 3. That's what I would do. Um, all right. Okay, I think that's all. So thanks again for joining me. I, hopefully I will see y'all in two weeks on either Thursday, March 31st or Friday, April 1st, depending on dancing because my life revolves around dancing right now. <laughs> but I hope you all have a great weekend and post pictures if you make this pillow. I want to see pictures, post them on Instagram, post them on Facebook, tag me in them. You can use the hashtag, hashtag sip and stitch squad. I want to see them. So thanks so much. I hope y'all have a great weekend. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.